Greenhouse chemistry, the reaction between iron and sulphur. Here on the right we've got a yellow powder, this is sulphur. On the left we've got a grey powder, which is iron. If we take a neodymium magnet, like this small one here, we can show that the sulphur is not attracted to the magnet. But the iron is of course attracted and you might be able to pick that up in the movement of the iron filings under the tile there. Well, if we mix samples of the two elements together, we get a mixture of iron and sulphur. So there's some iron and here's some sulphur. Mix them together. And we've got a higgledy piggledy mixture. That mixture is, however, quite easy to separate with the magnet because, as we know, only the iron is attracted to it, and we should be able to draw the iron to one side eventually by repeated use of the magnet there. Okay, not being too successful with the demonstration. I don't want to do it from above because it will all stick to the plastic on the magnet here. But you can start to see some slow separation, even through the thickness of the tile. So that's our iron and sulphur mixture. But what happens if we heat the mixture? Well, we can place some mixture in a bottle top such as this and heat it uh, and see if we can see a chemical reaction taking place. So let's put some of that mixture in there. I think we probably need some more sulphur in the mix. So we'll take some of that mixture of iron and sulphur into the bottle cap. Give it another little mix and then that's ready for heating. Of course we're going to heat not on the tile but on the metal gauze and this reaction is best seen after the sun goes down at night so we need to wait a little bit first. So here we are a few hours later after dark. Let's try heating the mixture of iron and sulphur. So the first thing that you can see happening is that the sulphur melts. It's also caught fire. And now we see our reaction. So that's the reaction between iron and sulphur. We'll have a look at the product when it's light in the morning. Having inadvertently lost most of the product from the first reaction at night, we decided to repeat the reaction. So here's another bottle cap charged with a mixture. Let's place it on the gauze and all we need to do is heat. So again, the sulphur melts. It's 
it's getting quite hot and there's our reaction we'll come back again later and have a look at the product once it's cooled down Here's the product from the second reaction of heating iron and sulphur. We can see a dark grey material fused into the bottom of the bottle cap, which looks very different from the powdered iron and sulphur that we started with before heating. Again, this material doesn't want to come out of the bottom of the bottle cap easily, and having lost one set of material, you can see it's again crumbling very, with a lot of difficulty here pushing with a stick and we, we are getting a little bit of um, crumbled material there so if we pour that out you can see again a dark speckled material which we suspect will be attracted to the magnet um, because of perhaps some residual iron so yes it is uh, there but nevertheless we've made a different uh, totally different material there and uh, you might like to investigate that further with some chemical equations.